Okay, this is going to be a video that's an update on the uh, Ford half ton that we saw in the last uh, video there. With a no start, uh, fuel pump not running, so we'll go over what we did and uh, how we sorted out the problems. So let's go out to the truck and we'll talk about it. So we had a no fuel pump problem. The customer had uh, said that he had already put a fuel pump in it and uh, done some other stuff. So we started out, of course, with the general preliminaries. So we went to the fuse box here and uh, get it open. And the second relay in is your fuel pump relay. And we checked the fuses and everything. All the fuses were good. And we went around to the passenger side. Kick panel had already been removed previously. And we checked the switch here. Uh, that's your inertia switch for rollover. And it was tripped, so we reset it. Still nothing. We checked out our connector down here. No power at the connector, so we disconnected the connector and we, put, and we jumpered it just so we would eliminate the possibility if that was a problem because we were getting the impression that we had more than one issue going on with the power supply. So we come back over, said, well, if we don't have power and we got a good fuse, we pulled the relay. We were not getting control on the relay. So we uh, checked a few things over. We jumpered the relay connectors to run fuel power directly to the fuel pump, still nothing. So we went back to the fuel pumps and to the rear fuel pump and we supplied power directly to the pump. The pump would run and make pressure. So we knew that we did not have bad pumps because that can sometimes get you. You got two bad pumps at the same time. Uh, so we knew that if we had done the rear pump, the rear pump would work. So we then said, well, if we got a jumper there, we checked wiring diagrams, power goes from here to the uh, inertia switch, to the tank selector switch, and then to the pumps. So we come inside looking for the next problem because we had that we knew we had a problem with relay control, but by jumpering it we had eliminated the relay so therefore we knew that at this point there was something else wrong so we're now we knew we had a third problem so we came to our switch here in the dash pulled the dash out and dash cover off to pull the switch out checked and we had 12 volt power to the center wire it is a orange with a yellow stripe uh, but no power on either the red or the brown with the white stripe so we took our power probe and we powered and he, the pump, he, both pumps would work, whichever one we powered up and we jumpered it and the pumps would work. So we said, okay, we know we got a bad switch. And so we pulled the switch off. We put a jumper in and turned the key and fired up. So we had eliminated the inertia switch problem. We'd uh, uh, discovered the, the selector switch problem and it eliminated both of those. We plugged the inertia switch back in and the engine still ran, so we knew that it was working. We could uh, didn't have to worry about jumper in that anymore. But we still did not have control on our relay. And uh, we were trying to figure out if it was a ground or a power problem, because it was acting weird. We were getting 1.9 volts on it instead of the 12 volts that we needed for control. We had a 12 volt supply for our load circuit. So over here in the in the fuse box, we have a diode. That's the ECM diode. Uh, supplies power to the ECM. And if it is bad or not working, then the ECM won't give you proper voltage outputs. So we pulled it out, we checked it, checked it good, we put it back in. All of a sudden we had control on our relay. So obviously we had a bad connection on the diode. So that was the cure to the third problem. So we had a, a, a tripped inertia switch, we had a bad selector switch, and we had a bad connection on the ECM diode so the ECM wasn't sending proper power to the relay. So with that in there, now we've got control on our relay 
and with a jumper on our switch connections we have engine run on either tank so now we just have to put in a $40 tank selector switch and the truck will be done customers happy away we go the switch is a couple days away but we'll get it put it in and we know that the system works and that the switch is our last remaining problem so anyways I want to do a little video on that show that uh, sometimes uh, you've got one problem with three causes at the same time and how to eliminate all the possibilities so you find out which ones are actually causing the problem because like I said we had nurse switch tripped it wasn't the actual problem but it was tripped when we reset it but we also bypassed it to make sure that it, we weren't getting a uh, one of them situations where you say well it must be okay because I reset it and then you uh, so you ignore it from then on and it's still causing a problem so we eliminated all of the switching problems and made and with the goal of getting the engine to run and then worked our way back through the system uh, at one at a time until we found out uh, till we either fixed or found out what the remaining problem was even though it had three problems uh, to begin with so anyways I thought that was a little bit interesting uh, a little bit different most of the time when you have a problem like this you have one problem causing it not to work not three but anyways uh, thought some people might like to to uh, see what we actually ended up doing to get the old Ford running but she starts and runs no problem at all so anyways that's a little update uh, we'll post this up this is on a Monday and uh, just as uh, how we done it video I guess anyways We'll see you on Friday for another disaster report, if uh, all things considered.